merits of a representative government in other words what are the advantages of a representative government one there is the existence of the rule of law the administration is based on respect for the rule of law and obedience to the provisions of the constitutions by the elected political leaders that is one good thing about representative government there is a well-established constitutions and these provisions are expected to be followed by the political leaders not the rule of man then another good thing about representative government the elected leaders are accountable the representative are responsive and accountable to the electorate under this system in as much as these people they have a mandate of four or five years <coughs> as the case may be they have to come back to the electorate so therefore it made provisions for accountability then of course elections in the yastic the government is set up through the normal electoral process government can only come to power to the normal electoral process of course there is a choice of leaders the opportunity is created for the people to choose political leaders without any hindrance because in as much as um, a representative government is when you talk about one of the conditions necessary for the establishment of a representative government we say there should be the existence of a multi-party system so therefore if there's an existence of a multi-party system it is guaranteed the choice of leaders because the citizens will have the opportunity to choose leaders then of course we also look at additional benefits of this system another benefit of a representative government is that the system is simple to operate it is easy to identify those responsible for the failure of government in as much as a representative government it is easy to identify if the the honorable members of parliament if the president is not delivering to promises they can be easily changed that's one good thing about representative government so in other words you cannot squarely uh, 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 push the blame to others but there is acceptance of individual failure either the president or the honorable members because these people have to come back to the citizens it also it makes for stability the government in place is legitimate and legally constituted so in as much as the government comes to power through the popular support or based on the established laws of the land it can also make provisions for stability it also allows for the participation of the people. The people are given the opportunity to take part in the decision making of their country. It makes for an enduring democracy. That's another good thing about representative government. Because at the end of the day, the citizens are giving part to in decision making of their country. But if there is no representative government, the citizens will not be given these opportunities. So let's look at the argument against representative government or the disadvantages of representative government one of the arguments against representative government is that one no true independency of the judiciary this is because the judiciary may be under the control of the government in power we've seen that many cases in african countries where the judiciary arms of government is being controlled or influenced by the executive arms of government especially the president so that is another argument against representative system of government then of course corruptions it makes for corruption practices among the politicians who may want to come to part all cost we see many cases when these political leaders or politicians will be bribing the electoral officers for bylaw stuffing uh, falsification of voters registered and all those things that is also another challenge or another argument against representative government of course you also have rigging of election this is a big threat to a truly defend representative government the electorate could be denied a choice made in as much as elections are supposed to be held by an electoral commission and the citizens have to participate in the decision making process but in most cases we've seen that even these decisions that are made by the citizens they are not bad adhere to we call them stolen mandates because there is every possibility that elections will be rigged by the electoral commissioner and when that happens the popular decision of the people 
will not be felt and that means that that is what we call the stolen mandate so the citizens are at liberty to choose but the decision with regards to who should come to power squarely lies with the electoral commissioner and if it has to do with reagan this is a big threat to a truly defend the representative government because the electorate could be denied the choice they've already made to choose their own political leaders then of course we also look forward at another argument put forward with regards to representative government or in other words the argument against representative government one is illiteracy the inability of some voters to identify party names and symbols may lead to wrong choice of candidates we've seen mostly in african countries there's a huge number of people who could not read and write and some of them cannot even identify the names of these political leaders that is it can it has a possibility of ending up of choosing the wrong leaders simply because the citizens could not read and write and the inability to identify party names and symbols is a huge problem then costly to run too much money men a sector are needed for a successful conduct of elections of this magnitude you also have the selfish interest that the representative may not be adequately represent their people or community due to some selfish interest so another huge problem is costly to run representative government it involves too much money and men imagine the past electors in case of sierra leone in 2018 alone we have about 16 registered political parties and that is a huge amount of money many people are involved so it's very costly on the part of the state in order to augment or operate a representative government you also have selfish interests the representative sometimes may not even tend to represent the interests of the people we see several cases that these honorable members of parliament instead of representing the citizens or the people who elected them they'll be representing their personal interests in parliament that is also another problem or argument against representative government so let's look at political participation with the political participation may be defined as a process of voluntary involvement of the people in the political activities of their country by that we mean when people take part in choosing their rulers and also involved in decision making in the government of the country so in political participation is a voluntary involvement is a willingness on the part of the citizens to participate in the political activities of the country the citizens are happy they are willing to participate in all of the political activities where they happen we refer to that as a political participation and that means the people are involved in choosing their leaders in, in decision making in the government that is what we refer to as political participation also let's try to look at the forms of political participation which the citizens can participate in in other words we have different forms or types of political participations political participation may take the forms of active participation in which the participants are known as political activists or partial participation or the participant may take observatory posture in which they are known as political pacifists or they are apolitical these different forms may take the following ways you have people who belong to political parties this is an active political participation in which the activists come together to form political parties so member of this party may take active part in electioneering campaigns political rallies and other forms of political meetings example people coming together to form the all people's congress of sierra leone the apc the sierra leone people's party or you also have the united democratic movement the grand coalition the national grand coalition ngc so when people come together to form political party these people they are in the categories of active participation that is one form which the citizen can also choose then of course contesting elections some active political participants stand and candidates seeking elective public offices on the platform of political parties or as private candidates if the constitutions allowed it sponsoring of political parties sponsoring political parties financially is another form of political participation 